Well, it was a tough session for the market where all the major indices finished lower, but they did exhibit a fair amount of moxie climbing off significant intraday lows. Investors initially ignored strong data on manufacturing and construction spending. Manufacturing number 57.2, that was actually in line with consensus. And I got to tell you, look at this chart, just down slightly from February. In fact, there's been an amazing run for manufacturing since last summer. And the highlights of this report were employment and export orders, two big deals, two very, very big deals. Uh, also on the construction side, uh, the, the number there was pretty good. Bottom line is that growth is still in place. And you know what, listen, naturally uh, we're going to slow. We had a six-month ride in, 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 in construction. Uh, but nevertheless, in manufacturing, of the 18 different industries, 17 were extremely higher. Again, on the construction side, the spending came in much better than expected. And what, what you really have to look at, folks, besides the fact that overall it was an 11-year high, the private sector. Private sector spending climbed for the fifth consecutive month. But investors were rightfully disappointed with those monthly auto sales. They were down almost 2%. Experts thought they would be up more than 2%. I will say one thing, though. Rich folks doing more than just kicking tires. Sales increased over 3% at BMW, 2% at Mercedes, 13% at Jaguar, Maserati up 31%, and Bentley, Brian Benberg, he went out there last month and got something, <laughs> up over 100%. Listen, it's obvious this is an anxious market. But the big question is, what's eating at the most? Is it Washington, D.C.? Valuations, the overall economy. Here to discuss the man who drove here in his new Bentley, <laughs> Professor Brian Brinberg. Oh man, your dream of it. I want to live that dream too. I don't want to live Someone that dream. Someone is living a dream, you know what? <laughs> They're not buying regular cars, but they bought a lot of expensive cars. And a lot of month. Teslas. I mean, Tesla had great numbers as yeah. well. So, so what do you think? I mean, we're we're in this period now where obviously Washington D.C. is sucking all the oxygen out yeah. the room. You can see where investors would be rubbernecking all day long, looking more D.C. than Wa Wall Street per se. But by the same token, there's anxiety about valuations yeah. and then concerns about the overall economy. Well, the valuations have to match up with what's going on in the economy. Investors are saying, okay, the policy issues are kind of murky right now. So what's going on with earnings? What's going on with jobs data? What's going on in manufacturing? And they're seeing numbers that are mixed. You talked about the great numbers in manufacturing, employment. We saw some down numbers in the auto industry, and that calls into question economic growth in the economy. So now they're going to be looking this week to jobs on Friday. What's going on with the jobs picture? Do you think the jobs number is going to have to be another big number? You know, here's the price of success for President Trump. He came out the gate with two really strong numbers. The yeah. first number was was maybe 50,000 more than expected. Last month also yeah. blew away expectations. Do we need something really big and robust to keep this thing going? Well, you know, the, mar uh, the market keeps saying the numbers aren't going to be that big. We're getting near full employment. Don't expect them to be that high. They keep going high. I think if they're over 200,000 again this month, you're going to see a pop in the market because what that suggests is people are coming off the sidelines. I'd love to see that labor force participation number go up as well. When you see those things, you realize there's some strength and possibility for strengthening that others just weren't seeing. What about D.C.? Um, you know, we just talked uh, about potentially the Obamacare re a repeal uh, vote, another bill coming up shortly. Uh, infrastructure, to me, I thought was the easiest thing to get done uh, in a hindsight, who knows anymore, and then the tax cuts. How much longer can a rally hold? If we, if we don't get any action out of D.C.? I, you're not going to see as much rallying on words and promises as we saw in the first part of the year and the last part of last year. They're going to want results. So I do think it's going to be a while before policy drives the market upward in a significant way. At the same time, you see some things happening. It looks like we're not going to have a big budget fight at the end of April. That could have been a big problem for the market. So Republicans especially seem to be getting a little bit more focused on getting something done, especially with taxes. If you see that happen, uh, you know, if you see some really strong signals that that's going to happen, that the Freedom Caucus and moderates can get on board, then you might see the market move up. But that's a big if right now. That is a, a big if. But the, also on Friday, we had the National Association of Manufacturers, their optimism number, 93 percent. It can't get yeah. much higher than that. Yeah. That's the best number in 20 years. It's soft data, but at some point that does start to materialize into something tangible, right? Uh, yeah, it does. And I think we're seeing a little bit of that in the manufacturing numbers. But I think at the same time, they're saying we feel good because we think good things are coming. You have to deliver. If we feel like you're not going to deliver, that's going to change you know, uh, employers' expectations. That's going to change behavior. So the delivery is very important here. All right. Well, good news right now. So far, the dips have always found buyers. Yeah. So somebody still believes.